I'll be recorded and um, uh, yeah, so this is our way of recording. <laughs> I didn't use this, yeah, no, no, it's fine. I mean, I just thought I used a YouTube live stream because on oh, Netherlands, so yeah, why? Oh, no, no, I don't know whether he's actually on, huh? But anyway, it's recorded if you live stream. Oh yeah, yeah. I think if it's recorded, I mean if it's live stream, it's also recorded. The what? Yeah, no. what? Welcome everyone again <laughs> to uh, ES3201. So we have uh, Yuti who's here with us. And uh, as I mentioned before, and she joined us in our class on uh, looking at all these concepts for social sciences. Uh, Dr. Yuti Fatima is a PhD. She used to do her PhD in the University of uh, Eindhoven in Netherlands. And uh, she worked on the topic of biofuels in Indonesia and understanding more about creation of these biofuel programs, how people participate in the biofuel programs in Indonesia. And today she'll talk to us about social construction of technology, uh, give us some idea about you know, uh, how people create and interact with uh, technology, how information is being created in uh, the scientific community, and give us some case studies as well of uh, the construction of um, social construction of technology using um, her own PhD work and also on um, the topic of maps in Norway, right? Okay.
Okay, great. Thanks very much. Please welcome uh, Dr. Yuki. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, this is my second time, but then like uh, the last time I just like uh, observed uh, how Jen is doing <laughs> her thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, my background is uh, it's kind of like a mix. So I did my bachelor in mathematics and in development studies. And then for my PhD, uh, I belong to an innovation group. So some of my uh, colleague uh, doing business and some other colleague doing more anthropological work. And even like my supervisor's background is more like engineering. And then what I did for my PhD is really like focusing on how technology uh, like move from one place to another. Uh, and then uh, social construction of technology is one of them. So this approach is uh, like emerged as a critics again, like uh, technological determinism. So technological determinism um, assumes that once uh, like a technology move from one place to another, it's basically will uh, change this, uh, the society as it's been designed. So for instance, uh, I don't know whether this is like a super old movie uh, called The God Must Be Crazy. And then in that movie, it's a, it's a, a story about the bottle of Coke. I don't know whether none of you have watched the movie. Has anyone watched it? Like, okay. Uh, it's so funny. Yeah, was, the God Must Be Crazy. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cute movie. And it's also kind of like a satirical in the sense that uh, it's a story about like a bottle of Coke that uh, dropped uh, from a plane. And it's kind of like influencing uh, like a primitive uh, tribe uh, in Africa. So like for the designer of the bottle, it's, it's really about like how to uh, travel like a, a boat. But then uh, for this tribe, it's really like uh, being seen as sent by the gods. So they, they see it as very uh, sacral and then they did uh, many uh, funny things. But then at the end, like, oh, this is just creating uh, too much conflict. So uh, they basically throw the, the bottle away because it just creates too much, much fun. So social construction of technology uh, also uh, goes uh, along that line uh, where uh, technology is not neutral. It's always like constructed. It's always embedded in a, a certain or particular social settings. So you cannot transport like um, technology from, from one country to another and then expect the same things will happen uh, to, to the other to the new place. Uh, so this is a, like a, like a reflect, uh, reflections on the week six. So it's still related with what uh, Janice has uh, told you guys. So where are these uh, social constructions in the epistemology uh, located? So we have the objectivism, we have the constructionism, and we have the subjectivism. So uh, social construction of technology uh, falls into the second category, which is constructionist, uh, where meanings comes into ex uh, existence uh, in our world. Um, and then uh, it's kind of like a combination about what you perceive uh, and what's the real things that are going on out there. So for instance, um, I don't know whether you're following the hawks of the coronavirus. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of information going on. Uh, uh, about the coronavirus. So in part, um, in a certain degree, you can see that this is a truth. Like if you if you believe in a certain hoax, you are being enacted by these hoax. Like, oh, probably there's no more toilet paper and then you run to a certain place or there's no more mask and then you went to like Mustafa or, or some uh, somewhere else uh, to buy a lot of masks. And it's become a truth, not because it's truth from the beginning, but it's really because you are being enacted by it. And then in, uh, in uh, like the science studies, this uh, idea of being enacted or how like the fake news uh, kind of like influencing you is uh, really uh, uh, appear in uh, like a stock market. So if there's like a, a rumor saying that, oh, this company is going to bankrupt and then it will false uh, because it's following the rumors, not because it's true. So uh, just uh, be aware that some things, uh, sometimes you need to check on it and, uh, and sometimes if, it, uh, if it's not like the, the objective truth, you can still be somehow being affected by it. And also, um, as a background, um, what is social construction of technology? So basically it's proposing that the engineering development are always social. It's not some things that are coming from like a blank space. It's always have like a social context uh, and it's not neutral as well. And um, 
it doesn't exist until social groups make them work for their purposes. So sometimes uh, when you have these new innovations, uh, but then you don't know like what's the purpose on it, or even like, like uh, for instance, in development, especially in uh, development contexts where like an NGO or the national governments try to promote a particular technology, and then uh, the local people or the villagers doesn't really believe in uh, what the, the new innovations can affect your life, then basically uh, it won't uh, survive the new technology. So it always has these uh, social groups that make uh, them work. And also like change in technology trajectory emerge from social contestation. So uh, I'm going to present later on about the history of bicycle. And then in the history of bicycle, it's uh, quite uh, obvious or it's quite clear about the contestations between different uh, social groups. And also like the approach emerged as a critics against technological determinism. Uh, so technology is always in context. Uh, it can, uh, it always travel uh, based in uh, what the designers want, which is not really uh, useful or it's not really always been translated as what the designers want. Oh, and if you want to ask question or if I'm talking too fast, just let me know <laughs> because this is my like concept and then we will uh, return later to the stories uh, later on. So the assumptions uh, for working with social construction of technology is uh, it's always like um, a difference between like uh, technology trajectory is a process of variation and selections. Uh, and I will uh, go in detail later on. And social groups define which part artifact are problems to be addressed. Uh, and technical problems uh, are those by social consensus, not technical solutions. And uh, technical solutions usually is uh, being adopted by uh, technological determinism. So if you see like a history of like a handphone or like the keyword key, uh, keyboard, because uh, historically we have uh, two types of uh, keyboards and one is like the keyword key one and the other one is the fork. Uh, and then like uh, for technical solutions, usually the assumption, the most efficient one are the one who's going to survive. But then history uh, of technology shows that it's not really efficiency that is the solution, but it's more like uh, it's network to the commercial, the, the network of the particular design uh, to the one who has the, the money. So it really depends on who's the decision maker of a particular design, not really about like technical solution or efficiency, but it's more on uh, how it connects with the social group that has the power to make the decision. Um, and social groups makes meaning uh, of technical devices. So everyone uh, that are being involved or related with like handphone or like laptops, they are the one who creates meanings to these objects, not like what the designer said. And uh, different social groups uh, create different interpretation of technological devices. Mm -hmm. So um, technological artifact uh, basically uh, refers to devices. So we call like object as artifact. So laptop is technological artifact. Uh, handphone is also like technological artifact. Like a uh, big machines for biofuel processing is also like a technological artifact. So everything that is uh, like technology is we call it as artifact because sometimes uh, technology uh, are like science. Uh, or like methodology, because for the uh, map cover, it's more like about method. We call it uh, not as an artifact. It's more like a, like a document or like a script or whatever. So it is more like the things, like the physical things uh, that we know mostly as technology. Uh, so approach in understanding technology. Uh, so this uh, social contractions. It's being uh, promoted by Sheffer Finch and Rio Biker in 1984 uh, as a response to technological determinism. So technological determinism um, usually is seen uh, as promoting technology trajectory as linear. So the most efficient will become uh, the one that will survive. And then it's about like research and improvement. So like from a one design to a new de uh, to another design, or whether like a it is more about improvement. And then it's uh, the meaning is in the artifact. So it's uh, being inscribed in the artifact. Uh, and it's uh, created to uh, solve a particular problem. And it's addressed like uh, technical solutions. Whereas in social construction, uh, construction, 
it's more like a multi-directional view. So it's possible uh, to have like a different approach, uh, depends on the social groups that relate to the design. And it's also about variation and selections instead of like a very linear way uh, about improving particular things. And meanings uh, is socially constructed. So one, um, one artifact of technology uh, can have different uh, meaning for different social group. And it's, a, it's about social process and the stabilizations or when the things are become like one firm, like the bicycle that we know now, it's like low wheel. Uh, and then it's quite similar everywhere apart from like the, the sport bicycle. Uh, it's happened with consensus. So how to use code? What's the benefit of uh, using like social construction of technology? Uh, it's to identify different groups, uh, position in relation to an innovation. So we want to see whether like a technology is neutral or not, or who get the benefit of uh, technology. And then like uh, in, uh, in a broader setting, we can also see like, if we're talking about oil palm, for instance, who get the benefit of oil palm and like, what a particular technology has been adopted, what type of standardization. So um like a, in a in a broad like social uh, technology studies uh we also use the social construction for standardization so who, who do the standards and who get benefit of the standards and how the standards are being like negotiated between different type of groups um we we do uh so it's not only limited for a particular technology but it's also uh refers to a different type of setting bigger setting and what does it mean to for each group? Because everyone have their own uh, interests. So it's possible like, um, probably you're not very uh, fun with, uh, or you're, you're not uh, in agreement with one group, but then their approach to something is kind of like benefit you. Like for oil pump, for instance, uh, many groups have their, have their own interests, but then it works because it's kind of like be benefit uh, each of the group in a different way. So it doesn't need to be like everyone uh, is in this uh, agreement of something, but it's, it's more like how a particular like activities uh, that involve technology and also like different people uh, can benefit uh, from these activities. And also like uh, identify moments of variation and selections. So if uh, you have a particular design, so probably um, if you're focusing um, or you're like following uh, the development of iPhone, for instance, you have this uh, particular design or the designs keep on like uh, involving, but then like uh, for your own uh, preference, probably you, you prefer like one of the design instead of like the, the latest design because it's uh, it's answering uh, more of your your needs. So uh, what is uh, what I mean by uh, variation and selections? Who are the actors that create or uh, that have the voice uh, to select a particular design uh, and then identify the process of stabilization and closure. So who are the people who has the voice to decide, okay, instead of like having the, this uh, like high wheel uh, bicycle, I just prefer the low one. Uh, so these are the, the actors that are important uh, in social construction of technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, it really depends on your research question. So if you're, you're uh, planning to, oh, I want to like uh, adopt like social construction of technology in my research, then uh, we're going to fall into the, the, the questions of what is your unit of analysis? So like unit of analysis is usually is coming more from an objectivism uh, epistemology, but then uh, it makes things easier to understand like what do we want to observe? And what is our research question? So 
if our research questions uh, for this construction is more uh, refers to like the particular policy, and then the questions um, about like the policy is who benefit from this particular policy. So, um, for for instance, uh, I will take some example from my current uh, research. So it's uh, on peatland restoration in Indonesia, and then uh, and this uh, uh, Indonesian governments, uh, especially from the Ministry of Forestry uh, and Environment, they have um, they. They already like issue uh, two type of uh, policy regarding peatland restorations and then like uh, how to prevent uh, peatland degradations. Uh, and then to see uh, the emergence of this uh, particular policy, uh, you really need to uh, see like who do these uh, negotiations uh, on why this particular policy benefit more the company instead of like the environment. And uh, this type of questions uh, are are like the social construction of technology um, questions. So it's, it's possible to focus on like one particular policy, or it's also possible to focus on one particular design. Uh, like another example from peatland restorations is like the design of the uh, panels block. So the, the national governments, the Indonesian national governments has a particular design of what the good, what considered as a good kennel blocks. But then in reality, uh, most of these uh, universal kennels block designs are being uh, restructured, it's either restructured or they just being ruined by the, the local villagers. And the reason for that is uh, because in these uh, kennels, uh, usually the villagers use these kennels to like transport their, their like sagu trunks. And then with this particular design, then they, uh, the people cannot um, transport their sagu trunks anymore. So you have this uh, different type of like object that or unit of analysis that you want to focus on. And that's refers to the constructions of technology. So uh, we go to examples and stories. So hopefully it will make things uh, clearer. Uh, so this is the, the example of uh, the history of bicycle. So as you can see, uh, they have like different type of design. So at the, the first, uh, at the beginning, uh, there's no like a pedal for, for the bicycle. So basically you're using like your foot to move, which is uh, super difficult. Uh, but then uh, it is super difficult. Uh, and then you have this uh, tricycle, um, bicycle as well. But then what is interesting is uh, like, this is the, the one that is uh, acceptable commercially. Uh, from, from other design. So the like the solid line refers to um, the innovation, type of innovation that you see. And this uh, like the, the uh, lines refers to the innovations uh, that didn't or failed uh, to survive uh, commercially. And uh, it's interesting because like uh, the design is uh, quite similar. And uh, I mean like uh, uh, this is the one that survived instead of like this one. Um, and it's super difficult. And the reason why uh, this um, that one survives is more because the social group that's supporting the design is stronger than the other. Um, but then you can see like it's not the most efficient. So uh, the quasi linear won't able to answer like why the history of bicycle uh, goes uh, in this direction. So instead of like the quasi linear view, uh, then the social construction of technology uh, offer the multi-directional view. And then like uh, according to the multi-directional uh, view, it's more like why a particular design are more effective than the other. And the question uh, and then the answer is really because um, so this one are the, the most survival compared to the other, at least during this period, because now we don't see that those I can find anymore, uh, apart from hobbyists. Uh, and then this one uh, are being supported by this uh, sport cyclist. Uh, and then like every uh, social group uh, has their own interests, like for the woman cyclist at the time, it's really like dress problem. You're not allowed to wear pants. And then you have, uh, and then like at, uh, during those period, you, you, you only, um, uh, allowed to like uh, sit inside, like uh, when you're you're uh, horse riding. Uh, so they have uh, different kind of like problems uh, that they want to uh, solve. 
with the particular design. And then like for elderly men, the, the question is really about like safety and stability. It's not very safe to use. We have like a very uh, high wheel uh, for bicycles and for the uh, tourist cycles. They also want it to be like easy to use. But then for the uh, sports cyclists, they really love this like a uh, long, um, this high wheel because it's very fast. So uh, like uh, from the history, it said like uh, if you compare the like the high wheel and then the, like the low wheel, then the, the high wheel is like uh, uh, fast, faster than the, the low wheel. So uh, from from this uh, diagram, it shows like what's the difference between like the linear and the nonlinear. And the answer is really because like uh, it's a contestation between like social groups, and this one has the uh, the like the the most powerful in shaping uh, what is being accepted uh, during those periods. So uh, then we refer to the concept. So uh, the relevant social groups are the actors that are being involved, uh, are being influenced, are kind of like shaping as well. Uh, the design of a particular uh, technology. So uh, what do you think from the previous one? Who are the relevant social groups from the bicycle history? Can you mention? So probably I will just like point you guys. Are any volunteer? I'm gonna <laughs> see <laughs> So like uh, the social group uh, is kind of like being affected. So the women kind of like being affected, but in a negative way, but it's also part of the social group. Yeah, so that's one. Like, I think like uh, we have more from the previous uh, pictures. Yeah, so uh, who are the relevant uh, social groups? So one is like the woman. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, uh, yeah, so basically uh, everyone that's uh, related with this uh, particular design, they are the, like the social, uh, social group. <laughs> they're the one, uh, like their, their interest in the design is uh, like the easy one, so it's quite similar uh, with the elderly men. They they want to have like a like an easy design, lower. But then at uh, this period, uh, there should know uh, much about the the, the lower uh, bicycle design. It came later on in the nineteen uh, yeah period. But then they 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 really try to to have it. So for the elderly men, it's a during this period, it's more like the tree, tree cycle instead of like a lower, lower wheel. So this is the like the relevant social groups. So even like the woman cyclist uh, is not being listened to your voice, uh, but then it's still part of the relevant uh, because it's being affected by the design. So it's not really about like who are more powerful. It's more like whose life or whose interest is being uh, affected by a particular uh, design, which is in this case is uh, bicycle history. So they have these uh, bicycle producers, and then like for the bicycle producers, it's actually uh, uh, their main interest is uh, inclusion. So how to include like uh, more uh, user to use bicycle because if it's more user, it means like uh, ability to sell more products. And then for the tourist cyclists, it's really like how to use the bicycle in a safe way. And for the sport cyclists, which is kind of like the dominant uh, like actors in the story, it's more like how to be able to cycle as fast as possible. And for the elderly man, it's a, it's a question about like safety, whether it's safe or not to ride a bicycle. So this is like an example of the problem of a woman cyclist. So the problem is really about like feminism, like how to write, how like the the right to to wear like pants, or even like whether it's uh, it can be uh, used by uh, by women. So in this design, uh, it's already like the the low uh, the low wheel, uh, but then like the problem is really about their their dress code, um, because at the, at the time it's it's not very uh, ladylike to wear this uh, uh, part of the 
of the dress. So the solution is, it, it, it can be like both. It can be like technical, how to design like a good bike that can allow a woman to, to wear a dress or, uh, or like, a, like a social solutions, which is like um, accepting uh, a new way of wearing clothes for women. So this is a like a like this is a like a quote from uh, from uh, Wheels of Change, and then uh, it seems like for uh, to men the bicycle is just like another toy, but then like for women it's really like uh, the way uh, they rode into a new world because then it's really kind of like uh, changing um, the way uh, like uh, women positions in the world. So it's not like only like a very masculine, like, oh, bicycle is masculine. It's not really about like speed and everything, but it's also about like, oh, it's, it's kind of like um, equity between like men and women. Both of them can do it. And then like both of them can wear whatever they like. So it's that the message should become different. So instead of like a creating a, like a technical problem, it's more like creating like a social, uh, social solutions by, by basically uh, changing the way women uh, can uh, dress themselves. Uh, so this is like the, the conflict that's also kind of like uh, showing what type of tensions and why one design are, are better than the other. Uh, so uh, the problem uh, belongs to different social groups. And this is like uh, about speed. So why uh, some social group prefer this type of design? And uh, the other one is like why other groups prefer uh, this uh, particular design because of the safety uh, uh, of the low wheel. So this one is easier, but then um, that time, um, this one is faster. So if you see like a bicycle as a part of like social class where people use bicycle for, for racing and then for uh, only like limited people can uh, join the race, then uh, it's really uh, about this design because then you kind of like uh, showing that, oh, I belong to the elite class. And then like uh, for this one, yeah, but then uh, we also want uh, to use like bicycle, but then like it's belong to a different uh, social group. Uh, so based on the history, this one's uh, lasts uh, longer, especially between the 1900 uh, year. So this is uh, relates to the second concept. So the first concept is about like uh, social relevant groups. So who are being affected, uh, either positive or negative, by the technology. Uh, and then in this particular story about uh, the bicycle. And the second concept is about like interpretive flexibility. So the technological device uh, depends on relevant user group because every social groups have their own meaning of the bicycle. So for, for this uh, young man, and then with like uh, a lot of like nurse and also like, oh, uh, how to become like the best in, in doing this. And also like part of the, the rich is also part of being cool. So it's a really like a social thing. It's like, oh, if I'm, I'm using this type of bike, it's dangerous. And then because of dangerous, I can use it, then I become cool. And then like for this one, it's really like a safety. So if uh, like women or elderly, elderly men want to like uh, travel in the cities and then they, they prefer to have like a, a transportation uh, that all of them to be safe instead of like fast, but then it's uh, really about the safety. And then um, from the history, it said like uh, at the end, it's uh, really this uh, design that survived commercially. So it's being like produced in a mass scale and then like a uh, surprise longer. Um, so, so it shows kind of like, these are the groups that are more um, being heard by the designer, the bicycle, or at least by the market. So this is the, like the third concept. So the last uh, concept uh, for the social construction of technology. And it's about like closures and stabilizations. So what is closure and stabilizations and whether like the questions, whether closure and stabilization has like a, a expired date? Because sometimes in history, we, we can see that, oh, uh, it lasts for 20 years, but then like 30 years later, then a new design apparently emerged and then it will, it solved the same problem, but then more efficiently, or it's more acceptable for like 
I don't know, like cultural issues or uh, for other issues. And then in enclosures, so closures refers to like a debate in technology. So you can have this um, rhetorical closure uh, by solving um, like a best way to solve things. So the easiest example for this is like, like the COVID-19. Like every countries have their own approach in solving or kind of like approaching what's the best way to solve this, uh, uh, like the spread of the COVID-19. And some countries do lockdown and other countries do kind of like a very uh, robust uh, tracing. And different uh, countries have their own uh, approach in, in solving it. Uh, and then at the national level, or at least like, okay, the, the people uh, follows the particular policy. Uh, that is part of the closure as well. So basically, uh, one approach is being accepted by the people, and then people follow the 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 like the protocols. It's also uh, that refers to closure. But the social closure refers when people accept it, and then there's no uh, much debate. Although, like um, in the current situations, you can see like, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like following what the uh, government said, but then I don't really agree. Uh, and then there are this kind of like tendency, but then. In general, it works because it's being followed by the people. So that's kind of like um, closure and stabilization. I mean, like in, in one month from now, we really don't know like what's the, the approach. Uh, but then uh, for the current situation, the stabilization really refers to like a set of like protocols that being followed by the people. And then that is how kind of like keep us uh, together. So there's uh, two types of closure. One is rhetorical, uh, so the relevant actors uh, see the problem as being solved. So it can be like social uh, type of closure where there's like a debate on something, and then people basically agree on uh, on having uh, having the uh, having the solution uh, being settled. And the other one is uh, basically by rede redefining the problem. So. Uh, returning to the history of bicycle, um, the there are like uh, three uh, social groups, uh, three relevant social groups, and one is the Dunlop. So Dunlop is like the manufacturers of the tire, and then uh, it's proposed like a new design uh, to solve like the vibration problem. So the vibration problem usually uh, emerge uh, in the low uh, wheel of bicycle. Uh, because it's, it's kind of like uh, wet between uh, the two tires. And for the sport cycle, it's not a problem at all because uh, the, the problem about the air tire doesn't really emerge uh, in, their, in their design. But then like uh, for the tourists, um, there are these uh, vibration problems. And what happened is the, instead of like contesting, because everyone uh, in this group, like each social group have their own uh, solutions and problems. Although this one doesn't, it's really about like the speed, so they don't have any problem. But then it's being uh, solved by having this experimenting, experimentations between uh, the low wheel and the high wheel. So basically, um, like uh, based uh, based on this innovation, uh, the the low wheel can beat the high wheel bicycle. And then by having uh, this new achievement of the low wheel, and then people start to think like, especially the sport cyclists, they start to think like, oh, probably uh, it's good to have like a low uh, wheel bicycle. So instead of like uh, focusing on uh, different or like uh, addressing particular problems, uh, they create or they redefine a problem by, by having like a, um, faster a type of bicycle. So initially, like the sports cyclists see, oh, I have no problem at all. Like my bicycle works fine. Uh, it has like the speed. But then by by having like a new innovation, they start to see like, mm, but that that one is uh, faster. So the manufacturer by by this uh, new uh, design, the manufacturer is happy because then they they able to enter the market. And then the sports cyclists at the end also happy because then they have like a faster bicycle. So kind of like uh, creating a new uh, balance for the three actors. So initially they don't really connect with each other, but but now uh, through the new the new design, they're able to to connect uh, with each other. Okay, so for a brief break, and then. Uh...
Yeah. <laughs> like not writing the the highest. <laughs> I think like like a riding horse because uh, when I ride the horse, then I use this uh, like a steps. And I'm going oh, to say yeah, I have a letter. And then I go. Yeah, yeah this is the most. Yeah. So like the most plastic case is like the bicycle, and the other one is like uh, if we. Uh, for um, people from informatics, uh, they use like the keyword T and the fora. Uh, uh, so the keyboard, yeah, the keyboard history, because uh, uh, like uh, according to the military, it is more efficient to have the, the fora uh, keyword uh, because you can type faster. But then like the it's already being amended in, into the market, and then um, because of this, uh, it's just uh, too difficult to read. To shift to another design, but it's also like uh, at that time the like the machine is not very sophisticated. Then you need the slowness of uh, of typing with the QRT design. So yeah, that one and another story is probably like a story about the um, um not that one or the computer from the military and everything because the history of a. Uh, Military is always kind of like shaping and giving like the best brand for our research. Capturing your voice. Sometimes I think not capturing your voice. So maybe just be you know, just aware that you can hear. Yeah, yeah. I think that's good. Well, the, the, the pictures are not very clear, right? So I think he already yeah. has the slides on the picture. Yeah, nice yeah, it's for white. Yeah. No, I think it's just the angle. If it's not this, then I have to get like one of those setups for mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. video okay. recording here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need some more water? Mm -hmm. Maybe use the bathroom. Thank you. 
Same time, I received an email saying the lab inspection has been cut off because the Friday pizza thing has already cancelled. There is a Friday pizza thing, which I'm not invited to. You had set up <laughs> ASC is getting shut down. I'm sure you have another course with it. Courses in ASC? Yeah. Well, no one said that there was anyone in any shutdown, but we just got sent an email asking, are you okay if your lab has been shut down for one week? And then, and then after that, suddenly our lab inspection, which is supposed to be this Friday, postponed indefinitely. Oh, so even this Thursday seminar? No idea. If they're canceling Friday social, I'm sure they're canceling. This one's mandatory. They seem to find a way for mandatory. Is it a seminar? I think that's I think I'm done with this assignment. I'm not gonna I'm about halfway through right now. I think you overdo it. Oh, did it restart it? Uh, no. I hope you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's good too. <laughs> no, I keep doing it. Oh, I'm not doing that. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Are you guys find it? All right. See what you got in our studio. Oh, this is not this assignment. This was the last assignment. Oh, I know. Open top. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Give me a boner. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be. Just have to rerun everything. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got so what? Like how late is late? Yeah, I'll try to end like that. 
I think it was a faculty. No one taking a break. We're still breaking. <laughs> Uh, so can we turn to yeah. Okay. So shall we continue or are people still on their break? <laughs> okay. So this is like a probably like a connecting uh, with the relationship between like human and nature. So I'm, I'm like uh, choosing like a case study about like how um, the social construction of the land cover map. So I don't know like uh, what is your projects or what are you doing, um, but then like uh, in creating like a land cover is also kind of like a social construction is related with a lot of like methodology and different kind of like tools. And then like uh, with different tools, it will create like a different uh, understanding of uh, what's really going on on the field. And uh, so this is like a one way of like implementing the social construction of technology in creating like a land cover map. So this is already in the reading uh, natural as well. So the background for this case study is uh, is really about mapping. Uh, I don't know whether uh, all of you relate, like your work or relates with maps or not, but then like uh, mapping is really technical, but it's also like individual and uh, social present as well. Because uh, in lab, uh, in mapping, usually like the result is being used either like by the governments or like in a planning agency or like by the farmers or like uh, for, for having like uh, tax, uh, propose uh, then you have this map and then like uh, it means that with different administrative units uh, are involved and they'll, they will have their own uh, interpretations of the area classes for a land uh, cover use uh, land cover or a land use map if when they are using uh, the same uh, class definition so um, for this particular part I'm going to ask you like uh, what is the social relevant groups? And then like, I, I want you like, I think uh, per row can, can be like one group. Uh, so please uh, pay attention because uh, then like everyone's need to, uh, to list uh, what they're thinking about what's the social relevant maps and what is uh, the different interest between the social uh, relevant uh, groups uh, have in creating like a map. So the case study is really about like updating um, the Norwegian uh, database. And this uh, database uh, is about um, intended, initially it's about uh, land use. So they have different uh, way of seeing things like uh, land use uh, is mostly about the functions and then uh, uh, land cover usually like focusing. Uh, so uh, land cover observed the biophysical cover. And then for, for land use, it's uh, mostly about the social uh, economic interpretations of the activities that take uh, place on the Earth's uh, surface. So for, for updating this uh, Norwegian uh, database, uh, usually like the, the local people uh, are focusing more on the land use uh, by interviewing farmers and also like uh, people who, who use um, uh, the land. But then for, for land cover, it's really usually at the national level. Uh, where they want everything to be like standardized and comparable between like one uh, area and another area. So initially the, the, the updating uh, proposal is for the land payment and uh, it's available for, uh, for farm uh, land that is in use, uh, which classified as fully cultivated land, surface cultivated land or pasture. So they have this uh, different um, categories uh, of creating a map. Uh, so every different actors that's related or each uh, relevant social groups that relate in creating the map, they have different kind of like proposed. Uh, so like 
at the end, uh, I want you to be able to to like map like who the the groups are and then what their interests are, like either for payments or it's more like uh, standardization uh, or other uh, purpose of having a map. So this is like uh, uh, like the map, uh, and this also uh, depends on the category. So this is the the pictures, and this is uh, based on the ortho photo. It's also being referred by both uh, the nationals and the municipal representative, but uh, based on the uh, class categories, uh, then different uh, social groups already have like different interpretations of what the uh, map uh, or what is being referred uh, for this particular uh, picture. So whether it's like a fully cultivated or, or it's just like particularly um, cultivated, and uh, the difference uh, between these interpretations really depends on their uh, background and also their interests, but also like uh, what are the people uh, that being interviewed uh, to understand uh, what the map uh, really uh, are. So this is like a different uh, definition. So. This is the, the one that's being used by uh, either the nationals and the uh, municipal uh, groups. So by the definitions, you can really see that the, they have uh, kind of like combining uh, the definition for land cover. So land cover refers to the more like the bioprecticals and the land use. So land use is more about the, the function of the land. And then um, they have this um, representative focusing more on uh, identifying the right grass species and not sign of active grazing. So uh, the national have different interests and then like the local representative uh, focusing more on the actual use and design of active grazing. Uh, and this is like uh, the they have definition of what a uh, pasture is. And also like for the municipal, because they're working more uh, with the farmers, uh, then then the way they kind of like defining a particular uh, area is really based on the farmers. So if the farmers use it uh, as pasture and then uh, is, satis uh, and is satisfied with that, then I would have uh, classified it as pasture. So it's more like depends on what the farmer said instead of like what is really going on on the field or uh, based on what the physical um, conditions of the field are. So uh, in this, uh, like we already see like, oh, they have a uh, different kind of like social groups that have interest with the, with the land. So um, for the first part of the presentation, it's more focusing on bicycles and also like uh, particular examples on like policy documents. But then uh, in this case, it's, it's about land and it's, it's about like map. So uh, for farmers or for the municipal or for the national, um, the land is being like uh, the meaning uh, of the land uh, is different. And then uh, the way they, they create these meanings uh, are being represented by their, their maps. So for the municipal, uh, the land uh, is represented uh, based on what the farmers really want. And it's also kind of like uh, this definition is not very healthy as well because even if like uh, for the national representative, they really want to focus on the land cover. Um, but then uh, in practice, uh, the definition is, is uh, allow the, the map to be interpreted either as land cover and uh, land use. So probably we can uh, move on to the exercise now. Uh, like uh, identify the first, uh, identify the the like the social groups, the relevant social group, and the second one is like identifying what the social uh, uh, groups interests are uh, regarding with the with the map. So probably each of uh, I think like we have like three empty spaces over there, or probably those are over there, and then uh, each of uh, each of the groups can uh, first identify. Uh, the relevant groups and then like identify uh, the interest of the relevant uh, social groups of the maps. So I have like one, three one, three one. 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 Three
Ignore what you have. Where do you see that?
No, in order for the or maybe he doesn't do that because if he gets in into conflict with his uh, local people, he won't get elected. No, so the local guy is not, he's not a politician. He's just a politician. Yeah, he's not <laughs> you can no, you can no, it's not at work. Well, I'm pretty sure it's not. But basically, the, the one no one talks has too much. Uh, has has too much about wrong. The one in the middle tries to give a shit, but then the one in the middle tries to give a shit. We we have a new one. We we identified our relevant social group. Uh, we're supposed to find out what 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 it means. Isn't that why we're talking about like it? Oh, fair enough. Yeah, but I'm not going to do we have conservation? Yeah, but that's why we we're talking about different things. <laughs> like how many social uh, relevant groups uh, do you think that uh, applicable in this uh, particular case? Um, we said farmers, mm -hmm. and then sheep people, people mm -hmm. that have grazing animals, mm -hmm. but as plant farmers have grazing animals too. Can you mean vegetable farming? Oh. Farming crops. Okay, I don't know. I'm not a farmer. And then we have, uh, well, the government, and then we said conservationists as well, mm -hmm. maybe, and the municipality. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, do you think like uh, the governments and the, uh, so do you see governments as like one entity, or it's more like uh, more? Well, it depends where the land is on. Is it mm -hmm. uh, county or local land versus federal land? Now, when we're discussing about priorities, if the government is too large, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, the top, the top level cares about the top level cares about things that are not relevant. And the middle level is trying to trying to care about things, but the bottom level doesn't need to care about anything at all. But so, what are the uh, the uh, the groups of or? Uh, I don't, I don't think I understand. <laughs> okay, I will, I will um, uh, move to uh, four groups and then I will, I will give like my, my perspective on how to read uh, different social groups. So, yeah. So, like, uh, this is over here. Okay, then I come in. I think there are four groups. 
because um, like these kinds of institutions can control the, the, um, the type of land, uh, how you use the land, is it for a specific type of um, produce or something? And uh, scientists, environmental scientists. So maybe they want to just take the facts which could affect like how you classify the land. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then that's it. I don't know if we have anything meaningful to add. But like maybe there's a distinction between like national mapping agency and like these representatives. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know where these representatives are from. It could be like from some ministry, mm -hmm. but that could be uh, different from like the mapping agency. So I mean in this sense it seems like the mapping agency is trying to be objective, mm -hmm. but I don't know how truly objective they can be, they might have their own agenda. Right? But it seems like they're taking into consideration like all the different groups. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the rest of the groups come. Yeah. Great. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. So this is more like, uh, it's very interesting to see like uh, what is being said here and what can you see like beyond this one? So like um, you mentioned uh, like um, the questions about what type of governments is the government only like one or they have like different levels. But so in, in this uh, um, in this uh, story, like the story is really about like they have this uh, national government that uh, over all the municipalities and it's like a regional level. And then you have like this, uh, this municipality. So there's like this, uh, um, Small government. And then uh, uh, these like groups, uh, they have like farmers uh, being like quote over there. And then there's more like uh, local groups. Uh, um, and relates with the previous story, it's really like showing that this uh, national government are in, in this like slide being said like as a national representative. And the, like the municipalities or like the local representative, they have different interests. So for the national governments, it's really about like the their interests. It's really about like land cover because they want to have like a national uh, map which is standardized and then can be objective. But then uh, the interest of the municipalities is more like a local map. Uh, it's, it's, it won't be very objective because uh, the way they create the map is based on what the farmer said and also uh, probably based on the scientists and probably there's also like NGOs. So all this uh, like clarity is more like related with the municipalities and that's why it's, uh, they are more concerned about the land use. 
And then like for the national representative, it's more like about standardization, how to compare like one municipality with another municipality. So they have different kind of like interests and they have different uh, objectives as well. Uh, and whereas in the municipalities, uh, it's really uh, on what the farmers or what the local actors really want. So uh, like some of you already uh, mentioned, oh, there's like four actors. Uh, and then like uh, probably like uh, two, two main actors, but then like different type of actors, which is not very feasible uh, in this uh, in this slide. But then like in reality, especially if you're working with maps uh, and then if you're interviewing people. So uh, like for, for mapping, um, like my, my research is more involved with like participatory mapping. So participatory mapping is basically like you have like local people coming, um, to a meeting and then they, they, and they are being asked like to draw uh, their land and then their position. And that uh, cannot uh, be kind of like uh, draw at the, uh, at the national level. For the national level, usually it's like, even like the data source is different. And then like um, the way what is important is also different. So like, I think uh, last week uh, you work on maps and probably it's more like the national level or regional. Regional, yeah, it's yeah. even like regional level. So in regional level, you have like different uh, interests and also like uh, different probably uh, research questions. Because like uh, for uh, participatory mapping, for instance, uh, the question is, oh, who owns this land? And then like, uh, what is the, the best management uh, to approach this land? So uh, in this slide, and also like uh, from, from mapping different kind of like actors, we have uh, different uh, interests and uh, different way of, of doing things. So for the municipal representative, they really take into account what the farmer said. And for the national representative, basically, no, it's not uh, the way of doing things. Yeah, it's still related with the concept of um, really as an answer to the question. Um, so map that works. So based on the, what happened in the case study, uh, what they're doing is basically uh, the national representative has more power and they also have more uh, capacity to create a map uh, that works. So what I'm um, referring uh, about like the map that works is map that being uh, mobilized and being adopted by the local people and the reason for that is not really because it's being accepted by the local people. It's more because like the national uh, government has uh, more um, power to request the municipal uh, to follow their 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 map. So in in this like uh, the previous slide, they have this adjustment. So adjustment. So initially, this is the map uh, that being uh, that developed by the. Um, by the municipality, but then after communications with the uh, with the national mapping agency, they start to kind of like change uh, the fully cultivated area. Uh, so the shifting from from this local map into the national map is really about like uh, who's uh, the social relevant group that are more powerful in uh, shifting or making decisions of what the final map should look like. So at the end, uh, a map that works, it's really like um, uh, this map because it's kind of like legit or it's become like the legal map as being approved by the national government. So if you reflect back of the concept of closure and stabilization, sometimes the decision is not really about like uh, what is like the best accurate map according to the local people or according to the interests of the farmers, for instance, or the, or the NGOs that uh, involve uh, uh, in, in, in the municipal uh, in creating maps. But then at the end, it's really like, who are the one who making decision? So at the end, it's, this, is, this version is not based on what the local people are, but it's more based on the uh, definitions. But also there's a shifting because like for the municipality, uh, their interest is more about like land use. So what's the economic use of the land? and uh, when it's being checked by the government, by the national governments, it's more about the land cover. But there's also kind of like a shifting from, from land use 
uh, tool and cover uh, of this map. So this is already like a stabilized map or in enclosure as well. And an enclosure is not through negotiation, it's more because what the national government said so. So uh, power relation is like a, a really important thing in having uh, this particular map. So from uh, from the from these three concepts, like uh, what who's the social relevant groups and, and like what are their interests, and also like about the stabilization and closure. So in this in this process, actually, uh, at the end, it's really about like the national governments, what the national government want, and uh, how they use their positions uh, in kind of like uh, encouraging or even like forcing the, the local people to follow them, but also like uh, in practicing a particular standard. Because for for the for the national governments, it's really about uh, land cover. So it's also that uh, there's like a transition from from land use that's being adopted by the municipalities and also by the local people into land cover that's being adopted by the by the national government. So yeah. So at the end, a map that works is a, a map that's being stabilized. Uh, and uh, has already like a closure, so there's no more like a controversy. There's no more uh, there's no more uh, like uh, objections. It's more like this is the one uh, that's being adopted, and it works uh, in this particular case. It works through uh, power, um, but also there's like a like a negotiation. Um, I mean that there's like a discourse in uh, geography and also in uh, in uh, especially in, in in creating a maps what type of map that's really need to, to be used. So the another possibility is to have like an alternative map at the local, uh, at the municipal level. So like um, in, in my case in Indonesia, we have this uh, national map, but then uh, at the village level, we also have, <clears throat> especially for the like the social forestry stream, uh, scheme, uh, we have this uh, social, uh, like a participatory map and then people really follow this uh, particular map, but then it won't be uh, knowledge, or at least it won't be adopted by the by the national map because they have like different scale, they have different interests as well. Um, so it's possible to have like different uh, type of uh, maps for a particular area, but then it, it works on a different groups. So for instance, if you are attending like a national meeting. Oh, what is like the land cover in your area? And then like probably you need to, to like focus on the land cover because for the national level, uh, it's really the discussion about land cover. But then uh, if uh, you have this uh, like village level meeting and then when uh, it's only like uh, local people then you have like a different uh, different map that works for you that kind of like um, being stabilized and also being supported by the farmers, by the NGOs that works over there. Uh, so basically, kind of like multiplying the number of maps instead of like having like one uh, universal maps that's being accepted by everyone. So it's also uh, so a map can also be strategic. You can have like more than one map, um, and it's also kind of like um, part of the process. So uh, like in, in this uh, sentence, it's also mentioned like the multiple uh, purpose of the of the map. Uh, and the reason why it's a multi-purpose is um, because it's it's not clear at the beginning whether it's for land use or land cover, uh, and and also like different uh, social groups has different um, purposes. So it's good uh, for a map to be able to address different kind of like uh, purposes. But then at the end, you really need to be able to separate it. So for the for the national. Uh, level propose that it has to be like a different map instead of like uh, promoting one map to be able to solve uh, different kind of like proposes. Mm -hmm. I just want to interesting. You know, the way the 
I think like uh, for Indonesian case, it's more like political map. So like uh, usually companies have their own map, uh, people have their own map, uh, and then uh, like for, for fire, uh, for instance, then it's really the, the story about like hotspot and even like uh, for the hotspot, uh, there's always like a controversy on, oh, you have to use uh, the NOFA or the, the aqua versions. Mm -hmm. So they have the uh, different versions and uh, about fire as well. So which map uh, do you refer to? So I think like what happened uh, is like a contestation of different uh, type of maps. And at the end, it really depends on uh, uh, what the government considered as legal. Mm -hmm. So it's not a question of truth because everyone construct their own, own map. But then at the end, uh, what is the map that being issued by the, the Ministry um, of Forestry or even like, I think that the, base, the basic map is coming from, from Lapan. And then, then each ministry has their own interpretation of the map. Uh, and then in case of fire, um, it really depends on, uh, on how the hotspot emerge. So, so even uh, there are multiple maps at the end, uh, what is become like the most powerful is the the like the Lego map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah, true. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in, in having this uh, this controversies about like maps and also what type of um, attribute that's being addressed in the map, then uh, there's a nice paper by uh, Jenny Goldstein, and uh, she's focusing on. Uh, like the idea of volumetric, volumetric, yeah, volumetric. So a map is uh, is being embedded by different kind of like attributes, and this attribute is very political. It's being contested, um, and yeah, so it's a yeah, it's a very nice paper. years ago uh, about uh, biofuel development in Indonesia and it involved like a lot, a lot, a lot of effort. Um, so the background is uh, really uh, about like the energy crisis in 2005 and then the Indonesian, and the Indonesian presidents at that time uh, introduced um, a program called New Deal. So the New Deal um, aim at simultaneously solving unemployment and oil crisis. So if we are talking about like the closures and there's no um, there's no like debate uh, regarding uh, about like the problems, then having like a magical approach uh, to solve that uh, promise to solve everything is a good thing. So okay, uh, like no one will reject a kind of like a program that can uh, solve like poverty. On unemployment, on crisis. So this is kind of like the the way the national, the Indonesian governments try to promote uh, the biofuel development. It's really by by promoting like a magic uh, approach. And then uh, this is uh, really happened at the national level. So there's many resources are being mobilized to to able to solve these uh, issues. Uh, and then. It's kind of like a formula that's um, that's impossible to fill, but then uh, in reality it's still. Um, so, despite all the the central government's political and financial commitment, uh, this particular program called Self Sufficient Energy Village Program, uh, were mostly failed to sustain. Only there's like one. Uh, project that uh, that's able to sustain, but it's also by by shifting, by redefining the problem of from creating uh, like oil into like creating like an oil, uh, but then like for our textile purposes. So instead of like biofuel, it's more like uh, how to to able to create oil for, for textile. So for in Indonesia, we have a batik, 
and then I use this uh, oil to for the latest stage, uh, stage of uh, creating like a batik uh, pattern. So um, this uh, this uh, framework is uh, is also related with the social group. So if you have like a designer. And then the designer have a message for a particular design. So like uh, for the case of map, uh, then the question is really like, oh, is it for land cover or for land use or for bicycle? Is it for the speed, uh, for the for the speed or for the safety? So for for this for, uh, for this approach is quite similar as well. So the designer of the biofuel uh, project. Uh, the the message is to to develop a small scale biofuel poverty allocation, uh, and then to support this program, uh, then the government have this uh, three months operation cost. So everyone that involved in the project get like uh, money for for operating the uh, the manufacturing pr uh, process, and also they're being supplied by seeds. And it's also being promised that oh, apart from having this all these technologies and, and the seeds. Uh, you also uh, will get like standby buyer, so it's impossible to fill. So the reason, um, so as a result, there's like uh, some people that support the program, but then uh, there are also some stories about like a uh, failed uh, stories. So in, in this in this stage, there are still more people uh, that support the, the program than people that don't. But then there's still already like a rejections because like in the villages, oh, we don't really want this. Uh, program, we already have like uh, money uh, for from agriculture. Um, but then uh, after three months, uh, there's no cost, uh, no operation cost anymore. And then uh, apparently there's like low productivity and also there's no standby buyer. So like there's more people um, on that don't want to follow the program and they, they have uh, new actors. So they have this new social relevant groups and uh, this one is like the local entrepreneur. And the local entrepreneurs have like, oh, let's just develop an energy crop for our local market. So instead of like uh, uh, supporting the standby buyer, which is um, initially designed for the national level, they basically create a new local market. And this is like uh, the pure, um, they have this new uh, design. And this one is uh, by having a pure plant oil friendly stove, so instead of like uh, having um, uh, the oil being sold uh, other uh, to other places, they basically just use it uh, for their own household. And then like, uh, and and this approach uh, kind of like creating a new market for the stove producer. So this uh, this whole story is uh, showing that like even if the design failed. Uh, some of the people benefit from these uh, conditions because like, oh, there's a new entrepreneur and then they, they can use the, the oil for different purposes. But then it's also kind of like creating uh, a new market as well because uh, they have this new oil and then they don't want uh, to, sell it, um, to sell it like uh, elsewhere. They will, uh, it creates a new kind of like manufacturer, this uh, stove producers. Um, and then, uh, but then there's still uh, some people that don't really want to follow because then their their like agricultural life is still uh, better than than following these new approaches. So this is the, the field location. So probably this is kind of like an example on how to do social research. Uh, and then in this particular research, I'm I'm doing uh, following the actor. So. Uh, my starting point is uh, in uh, here in Yogyakarta. Uh, no, it's 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 starting from from uh, from here from Kebumen uh, with the national government's project, but then it failed. Uh, the project in here it failed, but then the, there's like a local entrepreneur from Yogyakarta that buy the the seed from from Kebumen. So. I follow these actors uh, to Yogyakarta and then like uh, stay, uh, stay in Yogyakarta uh, and then following the workshop that they're doing. So basically doing um, kind of like ethnography, like what their family looks like and what their interests and what is their network. So the one of the interesting uh, part from this research is like 
uh, they're using the alumni group. Uh, so the entrepreneur graduated from the Yamada University and then they have uh, from the forestry uh, department. And then he has this alumni uh, group uh, network where uh, he knows somebody from the, I think at that time it's called like the forestry agency. And as far as the agency has this CSR, the Corporate Social Responsibility Fund, uh, that can uh, be used to, to support uh, his initiative because he's still related with the uh, with forestry as well. So this uh, entrepreneur uh, create a new like business in in Purworejo. And why it's Purworejo? Uh, it's because uh, most of the seeds is coming from this area. So uh, in this type of research, it's really like uh, went to the man on and then like following the person. Oh, the, the person uh, that buy our, our product is in Yogyakarta. And then I went to Yogyakarta and then like, uh, oh, I, I have this network. So I have uh, like the source of money uh, from, uh, from a friend of mine that I know from college. Uh, and then they develop a new, a new um, like companies over here. So it's also an interesting way uh, of doing research. And then uh, if we remember like the epistemological part, which one is objective, which one is subjective and uh, like uh, construction, this is more like in between because like probably everyone has different way of uh, framing the, the research. And, and for me, it's more like a following on what this uh, entrepreneur uh, did in, uh, in the research. So yeah, so the case study is uh, really like uh, this is what the scientists um, uh, did uh, for 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 creating a design. So the research. Uh, so if you're asking what is the artifact or what is like the technical uh, device that I have observed, it's more like um, I'm following uh, the design. Uh, what the government uh, have for this particular program. So it's very technical. So this uh, biofuel uh, based on these numbers is uh, promised as it's very productive, it's very good, and it can solve like um, poverty energy problem um, because it's involved like the farmers. So in this stage already like who's the social relevant groups already like the farmers and also the scientists as you, as you mentioned so that the scientists always involved in whatever uh, technical solutions being proposed. And also, um, like how it's uh, how it's like feasible in the technical uh, purpose, and they have this design, and this is like the universal design, or like at the national level, it's uniform, and then all the villages need to follow this uh, design. But then, uh, as um, I mentioned earlier, uh, most of the project following this design fail. So instead of like uh, having the oil uh, being used for this uh, um, for cars, they use it more for textile purposes. So it's possible to re redefining the problem as well. So as the concept interpretative flexibility um, refers to everyone have their own interest in joining something or in joining the activities. And then in this uh, particular uh, part, it's uh, activities of uh, collecting seeds from the forest. And this is like a, a one of the lady that involved in collecting uh, this calophyllum, minophyllum seeds. And then uh, it's being uh, processed over here. Uh, and there's also like a controversial issues uh, over here. So according to the seed buyer, um, they follow like the dry uh, weight of the seeds. Whereas for, for this lady, uh, she, she, um, the reason why uh, she wants to involve in this project is because of the, the wet uh, weight of, of the seeds. Because if you're, you're collecting it, um, like uh, if you store the seeds like for two days, and then the, the weight's already like reducing. So she was uh, hoping that uh, the buyers will just uh, bought the seeds um, once she finished collecting the seeds. But then like in, in the practice, it's really like uh, the, the buyers, the seed buyers really want uh, to have it dry. So they have this uh, like gap between the dry and the, and the, and the wet uh, seeds. And it's also created conflicts because then uh, she wants to have like a higher price whereas the buyer, no, 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 I don't want to pay more. Uh, 
and the initial design doesn't work um, because uh, you need more processing if you want to have the oil to be used uh, in cars. So then uh, they, they redefine re the, uh, the solutions by having, oh, if the cars uh, cannot use it, then use it for, for creating this uh, plastic pattern. So yeah, so this is like the, the like the complexity of the, of the case. So there's like political interest, there's also like financial and technical interest. And also there's like a, a lot of like forward uh, actors. So actors uh, in this uh, like uh, slide refers is similar to what I referred earlier as the social relevant group because like every uh, actors and this is like the name of the places that I went to like the Bolorjo and then like uh, the Bantu. So Bantu is in Yogyakarta. Uh, they have different uh, different uh, interests uh, to the to the biofuel project um, and how how different kind of like interests are being uh, worked out. So yeah, so that's, uh, I think that that's my presentation. So this is like another way of, of doing uh, research that relates like the, the human and the natures uh, and also how the new human and the natures is always being um, negotiated or, or not negotiated, but has some mediators called like science. So the way we understand the natures is always being are reflected uh, based on the methodology and also how we understand things. Uh, and I hope like uh, the main uh, idea is to, to get the idea of like the social relevant groups and the interpretative uh, flexibility and uh, closures and stabilization. So like uh, for the story, uh, the social, uh, the, the closures and the, um, and the stabilizations refers to at the end, none of the project works. It's all returned to its like initial conditions, uh, like the farmers that are really like these projects and the governments, uh, they are fine with the failure because at, at 2005, it's really like, oh, please give us solutions. Don't be so dumb or stupid, do something. So they, they come up with this uh, project and then like uh, after several years, it didn't work out, but then like the people already forget like what happened in 2005, they don't care anymore. So for the government, it's really not a matter of solving the problem. It's really the matter of acting. At least that is what um, is being captured, like in the social media or what people said. It is more like how to act uh, on crisis, but not to observe uh, whether this uh, process really uh, succeeds or not. Because, like, I think like. Uh, whether it's journal or not, but then like people's memories are short. So as long as um, they do some things during crisis, then it's fine. So everyone is happy with the failure of his project. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. To understand or any other program or like cadre or society. And I think it's something that's very interesting. And I think that the system to show how this product is being transferred and how the institution is set up to see the country a more powerful and more social system. So thanks for bringing us this new version of the company. And uh, thanks, guys, for. So next week we will talk a little bit more about the case study here as well. Some of these social questions all about policy because uh, the next about government and the next about the government. All right. Um, so for this Friday we will have the presentation for the whole university, and then next week we will talk about the government. Okay. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.